Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. And I would like to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, December the 18th. Per usual, we'll sing a few songs. We'll observe the Lord's Supper. And I have a message that I hope will be worthwhile for you. Uh, we sing from Songs of Faith and Praise. I will give you the title in case you don't have that book. You can Google the tune or use the book that you have. Hopefully, the song is in there. The first song we're going to sing is number 282. The title is, Oh, Praise the Lord. Oh, Praise the Lord. 282. <clears throat> oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. Praise him, all ye people. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us. Is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever, forever and ever, ever and ever. Praise ye the Lord. We're going to go to number 580. 580, the title of this song is The Joy of the Lord. 580. The Joy of the Lord. <clears throat> the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Before the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 354, I Gave My Life for Thee. Three fifty four. I gave my life for thee. <clears throat> I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom be and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? My father's house of life, my glory circled throne. I left for earthly night, for wandering sad and long. I left, I left it all for thee, 
hast thou left a heart for me? I left, I left it all for thee. Hast thou left a heart for me? I suffered much for thee, more than the tongue can tell. A bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell. I born, I born it all for thee. What hast thou born for me? I born, I born it all for thee. What hast thou born for me? And I am brought to thee down from my home above. Salvation full and free, my pardon and my love. I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee. What hast thou brought for me? I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee. What hast thou brought for me? We are instructed on the first day of the week uh, to gather together and to observe the Lord's Supper. Acts chapter 20, verse 7 clearly states this. We do this because we are to always remember the sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us. He came down from the right hand of God as God had planned. He dwelt among men as a human. He suffered and felt all the things that humans felt, yet he was divine. He was the Christ. And finally, as a perfect act of sacrifice, he abolished the old law of sacrifice, the old covenant, as he made himself the one and perfect sacrifice. So as we gather about the Lord's table, we celebrate the sacrifice. We celebrate it through the emblems of the bread, uh, portraying the body and the blood, portraying uh, the fruit of the vine, portraying the blood. With that, let's give thanks for the bread. We give thanks, O oh Lord, for the fact that you were willing to give up your body that we might live. Uh, we understand the agony that you went through and that you went through it and you went through that temporary separation from your father uh, for the sins of the world and you bore those sins upon the cross. As we partake of this bread, help us to remember the body that writhed in agony on the cross and that it was done for each one of us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We know the blood to be the life-giving fluid that runs through our body, that makes life possible. Let's pray for the fruit of the body. We're so grateful, dear Heavenly Father, that your son was willing to shed his innocent blood. And we know that through that blood that we can have our sins forgiven. I pray that you would continue to be with us, be with us each day of our life and be with us so that we remember the blood that we shed, we shed for many and we shed for forgiveness. We ask this prayer in his most holy name, amen. We are also instructed to lay by in store on the first day of the week. Uh, the Apostle Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 1. And then in 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 7, he talks about the Macedonians who gave, even though they didn't have a lot. So as we give, let's give with a purposeful heart. Let's give what we have laid by in store with the knowledge that all good and perfect gifts come from above. Let's pray for the giving. 
Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to give with both a cheerful and open heart. Help us to plan our giving. Help us to understand that our giving is not an afterthought, but it's a forethought. It's a thought of giving back to the Lord so the church may be able to accomplish, accomplish its mission here on earth. Bless us as we give. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, because we know that you love a cheerful giver. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And the last song we'll sing is number 172. I just came to praise the Lord. 172. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to praise his holy name. I just came to prank the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to praise his holy name. I just came to love the Lord. That completes our song service. I hope you praise the Lord with us. And I know that the Lord was glorified. And I know I was uplifted through the singing. And I have a message for us that uh, if you heard the title this morning, you may have thought uh, the title was somewhat intriguing. I meant it to be that way. Uh, the title of the lesson uh, this evening is, Are You Part of the 5G Network? Now, uh, I am not a media mogul. I am not a techno whiz by any stretch of the imagination. But I understand this 5G or 5 gig or whatever it is, I'm not sure. But I know that this 5G network uh, refers to uh, asking us whether we're part of the latest cell phone technology. And so the 5G network, from what I understand, and again, I just have one of those phones and I probably use it less than most people use theirs. Um, the, the 5G network makes promises to us. And you know, uh, on our 5G network, we can check our mail. Uh, we can instant message, or I should say just text one another. It used to be called instant messaging. Now it's texting. Um, we can put all kinds of different apps on it. We can go to ESPN. Uh, we can Google children's stuff. I know my grandchildren love to get on our cell phones and, and find all those great things for kids. So there are a lot of promises that are made to us when we buy one of these high-tech telephones. Uh, and I don't even know if they even qualify as telephones. Uh, making telephone calls is almost an afterthought using our cellular devices these days. That being said, in the church, we have a network. Now, pardon me for kind of sneaking that in. Uh, it's a network that in reality, we did not design. God designed the network himself. He did it for the betterment of his kingdom here on earth, the church, and for each member of the church. And what it does is it consists of several elements. I am going to use five of them. 
And since uh, I'm trying to be clever with this, all of them start with the letter G. It consists of several elements that can easily bro be broken down into these five categories. So, this evening, for just a few moments, I would like us to take a look at God's 5G network and see maybe how strong of a signal each of us is getting. You know, Jane and I uh, travel uh, sometimes within New Jersey. Uh, usually it's on Thursdays. We head up into Salem County. We are uh, kind of uh, people who love to see birds, especially bald eagles. And almost all year round, we go up there to see bald eagles. Well, we get into Jabip once in a while. If, if you don't know where Jabip is, there is no such place. Uh, Jabip stands for being somewhere where it's not very densely populated and very often cell signals are not good. Sometimes heading through the mountains, our cell signals are not good. And if you've ever been in a major cities like New York City with all the skyscrapers all around, your signal is not very good. Well, I would like to contend this morning or this evening that God's 5G network is a strong signal. It's a strong signal that should be an integral part of all of our lives. And remember, they all start with the letter G. It's the 5G network. First, God wants us to gather. He wants us to gather together as his kingdom here on earth. Now, you know what? We have opportunities to gather together uh, on many occasions. Uh, you are uh, gathering together if you are watching this broadcast uh, via YouTube. Now, we're not gathering together personally, but we are gathering together. On Sunday mornings, we gather together at a church building. 2535 Shore Road is where our church building is located. We get there and we have a Bible class at 930 and we have a worship service at 1030. Our Wednesday evening class is still done online via a special network that came out a few years ago called Zoom. Uh, the pandemic caused a lot of this and we are slowly weaning ourselves off of it. But one of the remarkable things is that we find out that very often via the social media, we get more people gathering than we do when we gather at the building itself. It's interesting. We have evolved into that kind of society. Now, we are told to gather. We are told because we gather because it encourages one another. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 11, it says almost exactly that, that we gather for the encouragement of one another. Now, we all know Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, which says, let us gather to encourage one another to love, all right, and good deeds. And then it follows by not forsaking the assembling, because when we gather, we're able to encourage one another. It's why that gathering face-to-face, body-to-body, um, works better than doing it online, even though we get a larger audience sometimes online. The gathering together helps us to encourage one another. If you perhaps watch this evening service, 
maybe you reflect on it with uh, some of your brothers and sisters. Uh, I thought Mark's message was pretty good last night. I thought that uh, his message lacked something. We do that to encourage one another. It's the way that Paul talked about the Bereans who weren't just satisfied with hearing the word, but wanted to get into it to make sure that what was being preached was the truth. If we are to be a part of God's 5G network, when we don't gather with the saints, we weaken the network. It's not God weakening the network. The time and the place has been provided. We strengthen it every time we come together. We want that strong signal. That strong signal tells us that you are to gather together on the first day of the week. We just observed the Lord's Supper. It's one of the main reasons why we gather together on the first day of the week, so that we can observe the Lord's Supper together. And even though it's a very personal thing between us and God, for the sake of a better term, we call it verticality. There is also something special about knowing that all of our brothers and sisters that are sitting somewhere near us are doing the same thing. They're trying to have that same relationship with God through Jesus' sacrifice. And so first, the first part of the 5G network is to gather. Second, the second part of the 5G network is to grow. God wants us to grow. He wants us to mature. He wants us to move on from the milk that babes need to the food that is more nourishing to the body, the, the food that the body uh, can uh, digest and turn into stuff that helps us to grow and helps our bodies to function the way they are to function. In order to do that, God expects us to teach the word to one another. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, he said to Timothy, now I've, you know, I've, I've given the word to you. And then he said, now entrust it to one another. What's he telling Timothy? The word is so important that it needs to be taught. Through its teaching, people will grow. It's why we attend Bible classes. We attend them so that we can be taught and that we can study so that we can understand what God's will is for us. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, and this is the last verse of uh, Peter's second epistle, and he finishes it by saying, Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be all the glory. Notice he finishes his last letter with a challenge to all of us to grow. And so another part of God's 5G network is the uh, ability, the desire, and actually the command to grow. Third, in the 5G network, is that God expects us to give. Now, giving can be done on many levels. Just a few moments ago, we observed the laying by in store and giving back to the Lord by giving through to the church. But you know what? We can give our talents. We can give literally our lives and we could give our resources and offerings. We can give our service so that the church can function the way it ought to function. Perhaps an apt question to ask is, uh, if I'm gone, who's going to fill in for my service? Will I be missed? Will somebody 
uh, kind of take up the slack. Why? Because we are to give. And um, there are specific uh, scriptures that talk about giving back to the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2 talks about laying by in store on the first day of the week. And 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 7 talks about the Macedonian brethren who gave. We, we limit the church's 5G network when we do not give, whether of our time, our life, our money, our resources, the way we should. We assist it and we make it stronger in expanding it when we contribute on all levels as much as we were a or we are able to contribute. Number four in five in, in God's 5G network is to go. God wants us to be his messengers here on earth. He wants us to be those messengers. Uh, he wants us to spread the good news about his son and to share it with others. And so when uh, Jesus ascended into heaven, both in Matthew 28 and in Mark 16, he said, go into all the world, preaching the good news, preaching the truth, baptizing them into the name of Jesus Christ. He puts the ball in our court. He says, you're the one that's supposed to go. Jesus doesn't go anymore. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. And in 1 Thessalonians 1, chapter 8, it pretty much says the same thing. God's 5G network is crippled when the church's expansion of this network isn't done. And we don't do our part to tell others about Jesus, whether it's in word or whether it's in deed. When we share with others, when we do good things for others, we can always contend to them, I did this, but I only did this because it's part of my godly duty to do it. He tells me to go and to give. We fortify the three, the 5G network when we live in and we mention Jesus wherever we go. That we let people know that we are God's children through what Jesus did for us on earth. Finally, I'm going to end it with kind of a cool one. The fifth uh, part of God's 5G network is that we are to glow. <laughs> we are to glow. God wants us to be happy people. You know, he said, I came to give life and to give it abundantly. He doesn't want us to walk around with sour faces. He want us, wants us to be happy because we have the truth of God's word in us. And in Philippians chapter four, verse four, it says, rejoice always. And again, I say, rejoice. We are to be rejoicing people. The Apostle Paul says to rejoice with those that rejoice. Weep with those that weep. Notice the rejoicing comes first. We are to be joyful people. In Second John chapter 12, he ends this short epistle by saying that your joy may be made complete. The song that we said, sang just a little while ago. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Notice it would seem that strength and joy are almost synonymous here. We are stronger when we are joyful. We limit 
the church's encouraging atmosphere when we possess a bad worldly attitude, when we possess a negativity about things. We expand it when we express the joy and we manifest the joy of God and Jesus's love for us. And so as I finish this evening, maybe the best way to look at this and the purpose of the church's network, and you can quote me on this, I'll say it a couple of times, to know God better and to make God better known. It's our job as Christians. Our job as Christians is to get to know God better and better. And then through getting to know him better and better, we should share the word so that God will be better known. This will happen when we utilize each of these five parts of God's 5G network, gathering, growing, giving, going, and glowing. And this is best carried out by utilizing each one of these in our Christian lives. And so to use a jargon of the day, how good's your connection? Are you getting the signal? And moreover, are you not just getting the signal, but are you using it? Are we utilizing God's 5G network to its greatest ability? I pray that you are. And if you haven't become a child of God, all of these parts of the network just wouldn't apply to us because we wouldn't be gathering. And through that, we wouldn't be growing or giving or going. We won't be glowing because we don't have Jesus Christ in our lives. And so if you need to come to Jesus this evening, if you need to confess him as the son of God, if you need to repent of your former lives and be baptized for the remission of your sins, the invitation is open to you. If you, if you need and want to do this right now, please get in touch with us. We were at your beck and call. We will be there and we will help you comply with the Lord's instructions to become one of his children. Let's all pray together as we finish. Our God in heaven, I just pray that the message of the evening will be one that, uh, is applicable to each one of us. I know that uh, I use some kind of technological language, but the the ideas are just so solid that, you know, the things that we are to do, to gather and to grow and to give and to go and to glow are all part of God's network for us. And we need to become strong members of that network so that our signal will be loud and clear that we are your children and we are to be about your business. Bless us as we work within your kingdom, that we do our very best to make this kingdom grow, to be examples to those about us, that they might see Jesus Christ living in us. Continue to be with us this week. Help us to look forward to the next time that we gather together. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe. May God bless you all. Man of soul.